everyone, Jeff here. Today we're gonna to find out about Forerunner third row compartment. This one's an SR5 and it's gonna show you what empty looks like. This one right here is a limited and it's gonna show you what a sliding rear cargo deck is all about. And this is a limited and I'm gonna talk about third row seats. So again, our choices, we've got empty compartment, sliding rear cargo deck, and we've also got the third row seat. And although these are 23s, you could extrapolate and use them as 24s or 22s or probably 2015s because these configurations are always the same three options that you'll get whether you're buying new or whether you're buying used. Let's start with the empty compartment here as we get comfortable. This one's perfect if you don't have a large family or a lot of travelers. It's also best if you don't want the novelty sliding rear cargo deck like this, row, 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 just like that. You want just a nice, tall, empty, cargo compartment this is perfect plus you also don't have to pay for the other two and since we're talking cargo what can you do when you have an empty compartment well you want to put this one down and then you can fold it just about flat yes that's right just about flat and what do we get when we fold those seats forward well a ton of cargo stacking space moving your kids into the dorm getting ready for the next garage sale loading up with Yu-Gi-Oh playing cards, getting ready for the next tailgate. You get the picture. I would be tailgating at a Detroit Lions game. I don't know how you could choose any other team. All right here, this is flat. You know it's flat, it's flat, chamon, and a little bit of a hump right here, but tremendous space. Option number two, sliding rear cargo deck. That's a mouthful, it's four words. We could call it a sliding deck, cargo deck, whatever you want to do. The things you'll want to know are number one, how much space it takes up compared to an empty one. And also you'll want to know this lever here and you'll want to know this figure right here, 440. Take a look at the Forerunner back end here. In a limited, you get 15 JBL speakers, 400 watt power. Again, a lot of because you got a deck. And when you're talking about a deck, even one or two inches can make all the difference in the world. See how this pulls out right here? We can sit on it. What could I do here? Well, I could tailgate. I could watch the stars with my favorite friends, family, my spouse. What could I do? I could watch the fireworks. I could watch my kids game. There's a, so much you could do here. We could stack people. 440 pounds, baby. 440 pounds, baby. Thanks for watching. If you're getting some benefit from this video, please hit subscribe and join Auto Jeff Reviews YouTube channel. Appreciate you all. And then remember, pull the lever, and this, and this, and this, and bend and snap. Works every time. So, is that convenient? Is it not convenient? And how about this lovely beige interior? Remember, with the sliding cargo deck, we might get a different configuration for third row and second row than we got with an empty compartment. So we'll move this one down. Headrest, don't forget our headrest. Headrest for sale, it's flat. See, even with the deck folded in and the seats folded up, it's completely 100% flat. This may be better for builders. Maybe you're going to Home Depot. I don't know if we'll have enough time. This might be great if you just have a lot of stuff to move or do you need this extra portion, one quarter portion. Do you need that one quarter portion right there? So let's come around to the side and we'll see. Does that make a difference to you? Do you have a preference? You might like the sliding deck, but do you want to sacrifice the space? And do you like having a flat surface? So it's kind of like pros and cons. When you get a third row seat option, this is choice number three, it makes things simpler, more convenient, but perhaps even more complicated because we're giving away space, we're adding space in certain regards. What do you think? For example, when the seats are folded down, when the seats are folded down, when the seats, anyone know the song? You should. All right, so look here. The seats are relatively flat. I feel like they sit up a little bit higher though. Maybe not. So it's relatively flat and we've got all this space, it seems like. But remember, this extends up to fit those third row seats. So here's what we can do. Pull the lever. Pull the lever. 
we can raise our headrest. You can also lower your headrest just like that. So we can configure it this way, one seat up, one seat down, or no seats up, all seats down. And how are we gonna get to that third row? Well, a few different steps. I got that seat down so you can see just a little bit better. What we wanna do is pull this one. This is the carpool side, so it's gonna open a little bit more than the other side. And then you sneak in through this way. Is there a seat bottom though? Maybe not. Oh no, there's no seat bottom. What do we do? Well, you pull it out. So that becomes the seat bottom and you retract the seat by pulling this lever right there. If you're looking for a few more options for second row or third row, maybe you'd wanna get the next gen when it comes out. I'm sure that'll have things like rear USB, maybe a little bit bigger cup holders, bottle holders, things like that. Just really hard to say. It'll have a whole new powertrain, new styling inside and outside. There's the third row there. And I think we can see that this is not a seat in the third row that's built for somebody above, well, five foot seven. I'm five foot eight and just a little bit cramped back here, but it still works. I mean, if you wanna carry the whole family to dinner or something like that, or maybe a long road trip, you can do that. You can see right here, I've got good room for my legs. The spacing is nice because it's just two seats. We'll come over here. And also, the seats are comfortable. So the comfort is with the seats themselves. That was deep, right? So here's my space, and we're gonna come around here because we're vlogging, and we'll show you how to open this up from the back. You just pull that, and that goes all the way forward, and you can jump out. Three window stickers here, so now we can see what they cost. This is the SR5. That's not so important for this one because any trim level could have an empty compartment. Look at this no charge it'll always be in the factory options section so this would be going to the limited here so here the sliding rear cargo deck is going to be 350 dollars more is it more than the third row or is it less we'll check this limited here this one oh 1365 dollars so when we figure out cost and savings and extra costs which one factors into your decision now? Do you want no charge, 350 or 1365? Hey, Macarena. That's it for the cargo area. I'm gonna show you around an SR5 and then I'll show you around a Limited just so you can see. But if you're done with the video, then thanks for subscribing. And I'm at Toyota Jeff Reviews and Auto Jeff Reviews. Those are my two channels, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. So thanks for following me on whatever platform you wish. All four runners have a 4.0 liter V6 engine. This is the SR5, by the way. Gives you 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque. This was changed in 2020. They've added rear air vents and rear USBs. Also larger screens. That was for 2020. And then in the past few years, they've added all LED headlights, high beam and low beam, and LED fog lights to every single trim. There are a lot of different trim levels that you can choose on a 4Runner. That's one of the appeals one of the pieces of charm is that there are so many different trim levels grades configurations that there's probably something for everybody on the limited you're gonna see that it has the power passenger seat not so much on the SR5 as you probably expect this has cloth seats pretty comfortable here good side bolstering really I feel like kind of hugs around you locks you in if you own a 4Runner feel free to comment on your experiences what do you think here the limited is gonna have the digital temperature I kind of like having this though, because if you got work gloves on or you just want to tweak it just a little bit, the large knobs definitely help. So this is an example of what the screen looks like now. Here's an example over here of this one. The multi information display does not have home link for garage door openers. It's got sunglass holder. So that's our friend. SR5. How about this Barcelona red? It's been one of the classic Toyota colors for a long, long time. And actually what I'll tell you about the limited here, this is magnetic gray. Magnetic gray is going bye-bye for 2024. It's being replaced by underground color. You may have seen underground on a Camry, on a Corolla, on the new Tacoma. So that would be something to think about as well. So let's go inside this limited. Ha, take two. It was locked the first time. That's right, we don't mind showing a blooper or two. 
If you think every creator who films is perfect, they've cut out all the scraps. What about this beige interior? This is beautiful. So we're gonna see some more options than we saw in SR5, and it's a really good way to do a little comparison. The Limited's gonna have some wood grain here. Mm-hmm. Moonroof. Leather seating that's gonna be heated and cooled, has a power passenger seat. I really like this beige interior for me because it really breaks up perhaps an otherwise dark interior. I like that a lot. All right, digital, remember, then we've got this big giant screen here. Does this look any different to you? Limited has memory seats, lumbar support, and then it'll also have a new feature for 2024, standard from the factory, the heated steering wheel. Eh, turn on the wipers. My wiper, wiper, wiper blades. Also has the panoramic view monitor that lets you see around the vehicle. Like that. So how do you like our friend Limited? I see home link for garage door openers too. Thanks everybody so much. I'm at Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. If you follow those, I'd love it if you followed me. Auto Jeff Reviews, A-U-T-O-J-E-F-F, -F, cause we cover autos, autos, A-U-T-O. Thanks guys so much. I'm also at Toyota Jeff Reviews. If you wanna see all about Toyota and Lexus content, not just everything. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. If you're interested in more Toyota 4Runner content, I'll put up the playlist to Toyota Jeff Reviews so that you can kind of go back and forth between the two channels. I have, I'll bet, over 100 different 4Runner videos that you might like. Thanks guys so much. See you soon.